afternoon. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming along to this talk. Um, so my name is David Paartjes, um, and this talk is about how to integrate security into your Agile SDLC. And I don't hope to disappoint maybe some of you, but this is not about automation or tooling whatsoever. Yeah. I strongly believe that in software security, um, tooling is a nice to have and shouldn't absolutely not be your first priority. Get your foundations for right first and then start exploring a tool and can maybe help you to win some time uh, here and there. It's the last talk of a long day, maybe a long night, so probably you all have an information overflow by now. Um, so I figured to get it easy on you and promise there will be very little text in these, uh, in these slides. So, um, for the agenda for today, we'll start off with an introduction so you have an idea who I am and what my background is. Um, then I would like to touch on the software security dream, this perfect security which we are preaching for about 10 years, but we still <laughs> seem not to get uh, very right at the moment. I want to compare this with um, how I see software security is being done a lot of times. Um, just to set some markers which we can refer back to throughout the talk to compare how we are doing uh, with agile security testing and if we are making progress and maybe even approaching this perfect software dream we have. Then I will get to the meat of this talk, um, which basically is a step-by-step -step time lapse of a one-year pilot we did at one of our clients on getting from uh, waterfall security to agile uh, security testing. So I can talk all day about this, but I just collected the highlights. So <clears throat> one thing I learned is that agile is practiced in many different ways. So this don't expect a silver bullet, but I hope you can just cherry pick and maybe use some of the things uh, in your situa situation at home. Some things might work, some things uh, won't probably work in your situation. So about me, um, David Vartjes, I'm a software security guy, doing this for over 10 years now. Um, I'm a technical guy, so spending my days code review, threat modeling, and helping to, to build security and security testing. I'm co-founder of Securify, a Dutch software security firm, and we help clients to design, build, and run secure software for web and mobile. And we are strong believers of the build security in approach, like catching things early when they are still easy and cheap to fix, right? Um, before uh, we launched Securify in early 2013, I've been doing software security at Rabobank, uh, which is a Dutch bank. Um, and before that, I did about eight years of software security pen testing consultancy for a lot of Dutch firms. <coughs> so far, okay, the software security dream. <coughs> <coughs> this sunny land with green fields, blue skies, and love, peace, and happiness everywhere. And probably you all know how that looks like, right? In my dreams, it looks a bit like this. And anybody of you who is practicing security in SDL probably knows these type of pictures, all the buckets lining up the different stages in our software development life cycle. And we have perfectly built in all these security activities in each of them catch things early, well, they are still easy and cheap to fix. So we have abuse cases, we have threat modeling, design reviews, code reviews, peer reviews, secure coding guidelines, pen testing, secure opera operations, and the whole shebang. Um, okay, back to reality. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we still, we fully seem to focus on this, this pen testing activity. For over 10 years now, we built entire industries around it and it's like fully integrated in a lot of organizations. We know how to do this. We have security test teams, pen testing teams, or teams coordinating uh, uh, security testing. Um, mainly we are compensating with a big security test for not having or having done very little about software security in the early stages of the process. So when you um, look at this from a project timeline view. 
this is what you get. So you start designing and building your software and somewhere you planned like for a two, three week pen test ceremony happening right before you went to go live. And chances are high that if you didn't do anything about software security, the only thing, or didn't do anything about software security in the early stages, the thing you were doing is actually testing if it got secure by accident. And this will ruin your planning because there will be findings and you won't go live and so probably you all know about this, right? And this whole thing always makes me think about this. So you run through your level, doing all the things, have some fun, and right at the end, you will have this nasty security end boss protecting his go live queen. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> this, this doesn't work, right? And it seems to be that security testing is one of the last, or maybe the last activity, which is still stuck into this waterfall approach. Development moves along. They're doing agile. And security keeps stuck into this waterfall pen testing thing. So when you combine these two, you get this. So you have your de agile development team committed to a bunch of stories. They work their ass off to get things done, to have it all packaged and patched and right to go to production. And then they are blocked by security. They need to do an intake, probably wait about three weeks for the pen test to happen. This pen test will probably take a week. Um, after the week, you will get your report and there will be findings there and you need to do rework, but your team already committed to new stories and so you have to cram this in somewhere. And this is pretty frustrating for software developers. So just to, to get an idea, how many software developers do we have in the audience? And who of you do Agile? Okay, so the rest, security people? Yeah, okay, so, uh, both, <laughs> great. So we have a nice balance, I think, so this can be a nice battle. Um, so this is frustrating for software security people. Um, but it's also frustrating for security teams. Imagine yourself being part of a security team with over 50 software development teams in your organization, which in their waterfall time did about like a release each three or four months. And now all these teams are requesting sign off every three or four weeks. Trust me, you will completely lose it and you somehow will start giving in on quality because you can never keep up with that. So there's frustration, I think, in both parts. <coughs> so probably it goes without saying, but I think waterfall security testing, agile development, if you want to do real agile, just ship right after you close the sprints, they, are, they aren't uh, uh, pretty much friends. Um, so we, I've been in this exact situation and um, we decided to, to explore if we could find ways to reshape this waterfall security testing thing to fit Agile again. Um, so we, we started to, to study this and to run a pilot. Um, we set some requirements. We, we as security wanted to blend into development and not ask too much, much of a change for the development process because if we couldn't get these guys on board, it was, this will fail for sure, right? Um, we also uh, wanted to keep this really, really practical. So just get s with one main goal to get like secure projects. And that's, of course, you will have some accountability here and there, but the main focus was on shipping secure software practically. And our management had some requirements too. It should be cost and resource efficient and actually it shouldn't cost more than the pen testing thing we were doing already. So I, I decided to just uh, meet up with one of our core software development teams working on security critical software releasing oft often and that already had their fair portion of waterfall security frustration which was great because they were really willing to help me out in finding ways to get security built into their process. Um, so the first thing I did, because 
back then, I was a complete agile noob. I didn't know much <coughs> about agile and how this team actually worked. Um, so I, I studied agile and I started to just join this team, um, which this was basically their schedule. So they, of course, had a daily stand-up every day. They got sprint cycles of two weeks. They have a uh, grooming session at the beginning of each week and a demo and a retro at the end. So I just started to, to join, join them here and there. And I only had about like six to eight hours per week to spend on this. And in the meanwhile, uh, which is important to say, the core process for security assurance was still this final pen testing thing. Because this was a pilot and the core process, this train kept going, so we had to do security tests and sign off still for those as well. So this was just like one fifth of the, of the week um, I could spend on this. Um, so I started to learn, learn this team, um, what their roles wa were, uh, what kind of runs responsibilities were there, what kind of tools they used, um, how they worked, uh, and actually for me, the, the most interesting meeting they had was the grooming session, of course. In the grooming session, this team is talking technical details and we security guys love these te technical details and we need them to figure out if security testing is needed, what to test and uh, what we need for this. So basically in a grooming session, the team runs through the backlog and uh, business analyst is business analyst is presenting his user stories. The team is starting to ask a thousand questions to get the details out on uh, which they need to actually build these user stories. So there's a lot of technical discussions uh, going around there. So I um, started to uh, to join them and uh, I did this for about two months just to get really acquainted with their with their process. Um, and the next thing I, thing I started to do was tagging their user stories. So in Agile, there is very little time to do all your security testing uh, things. So one of the main things is you need to be very, very efficient. So we took a risk, strong risk-based approach and we only tested and reviewed what really needed testing and reviewing. What we were used to do in this pen testing approach is that we always just checked everything they build in the sprints from, from, from start to end and uh, this took us most of the time like up to a week so we always planned a week when these guys went, wanted to go live. So we needed to do something about efficiency here so I figured just to, to filter out the security relevant activities and um, put my comments in there, like why I thought it needed security testing. So when I saw any risks, I put the risks in there. I also put a list of measures I expected to see in there. Um, I also gave hints and tips on doing things right the first, first time. Um, things they should look out for, just practical information. And so what we are basically we're doing here is agile threat modeling. So each story that was discussed in this grooming, we were thinking and looking at it from a security perspective. And we discussed this with the team as well. So we weren't only like from another room entering this data into the storyboard. No, we were really wanting them to be on board. So we were talking a lot of security in the sessions. So they really knew why it was important and I want to make sure that they all understood how to fix things and why, uh, why I was adding these uh, additional acceptation criteria to this story. So this actually worked, worked pretty great. So we were able to get from 10 or 20 user stories to maybe five, six or seven, which were really security relevant. There were sprints where we couldn't find any security relevant chains, so they just got to go live without any additional assurance from us. So this, this is really good. This really speed up this entire pen testing thing because remember at the moment we were still doing this pen testing approach, but um, 
because we were joining, I was joining this grooming, I could very well prepare for such a test. So I knew it was coming. I knew how many security relevant changes were in there. I knew which requirements we should check. So we were able to upfront schedule for a five, four, three, two, or zero day pen test. So we got some return on investment here because the pen test we did was way more efficient than we did before. But we were still doing the pen testing thing at the very end. So they were still blocked by security. Only the security test was got a bit more efficient. Um, the next thing um, I decided to do is to all these security stories we checked and we tagged to review them right away when they were checked in by the team. So I discussed with the team, so any of the tagged user stories you are working on, if you're done, just let me know, give me an update, send me your, your Git links, and I will check the code right after you're done. So by doing this, I was able to provide really early feedback to the team. So any security issues I found, or if I thought things needed better security or a higher security level or weren't perfect from a security perspective, I sit together with them, explain them uh, my concerns <coughs> and thoughts, and we started fixing them together, or they started just fixing them uh, by themselves if they really knew what, 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 needed, what was needed. So, um, <coughs> From a, secure, from a software development team's perspective, this is like almost heaven, right? So you have your story, you build it, you check it in, and you have a guy looking at it right away, getting back to you with feedback, helping you to fix things. So we were able to fix all the things in the sprint, so we didn't have a problem of like a sprint getting closed and rework that was still needed. So this was working out quite well, and I, Kept up with this for, I think, three or four sprints, and then I started to fully lose it because this is in no way like uh, uh, able to, to combine in your planning with all your other activities because up front you don't know when they finish a story, right? This can be today and this can be tomorrow. And uh, you don't really know how much time you need to check it because you don't know how much code is in there. So this, I needed to, uh, to cram all those activities in my planning and I was starting to lose it. So this, this, this was a dead end, but from a software team perspective, we were on the right track. Um, so basically what we did is slicing up this, this, this the end test into <coughs> little pieces. So we were doing a bit of agile security reviewing here already. It wasn't perfect because this is horrible to plan, but it looks way better than the blocking end test, right? And so let's do a quick retro where we are, what's good, and why we need some improvement. <coughs> so one of the good things was that we were able to have to do 80 to 90% of the final review already during the sprints. <coughs> this all was based on code reviews. So code reviews are, from a efficiency perspective, great because it's just static. You don't need anything for it. You don't need a running environment, test data, accounts, URLs, and everything else you can think of. Um, and because we were doing this during the sprints, we had just like separate user stories that didn't come together, so there wasn't a working environment or whatsoever. So <coughs> for some of the activities, which we really needed to a running environment because we want to verify some things, we thought it might be bad from a code perspective, but we want to verify hands-on. So we need to wait to the end. So that's about the 20 to 10 percent, um, which we have to wait for until there was a test environment up and running. So we were also able to limit the unexpected surprises at the end. So with this approach, um, we didn't have any trouble anymore with findings popping up after the sprints were closed. So maybe in, in the last 10 to 20%, but 
these chances were very, very little because this was only verification activities and the core of the review we already did during the sprint. Um, so <coughs> that was good as well. Um, a bad thing is the, is the planning part, which was a total hell. Um, I couldn't keep up with. Um, another thing is that we were not fully integrated into their tooling. So we were tagging user stories, but we weren't adding tasks to, the, to it. So we weren't part of the grooming, pokering as well. So stories that were pokered or assigned like eight story points, including our activities might have been 13. So we were cheating a bit. Um, and from a team's perspective, we were, the things we were doing, we were a ghost because there weren't any activities on their board. So we really weren't fully integrating into, into that process. But we made a nice, nice first step. Um, so to solve this planning uh, issue, we decided to just get on site for one day. So generally the day of the grooming, so we could join the grooming session and the rest of the day, we just sit together with the team and reviewing on the user stories, chatting about security, sharing some knowledge here and there. And this was way more efficient because we just collected all the stories that were checked in the week before and we did a review on it on Monday. And if we got some feedback, we were sitting together so we could fix things really fast. We had some problems though, because if you are closing your sprint here, then the first opportunity to look at everything they built here is here, which is too late. So, so we, we had to shift some of the days at the end of their sprints. And, but this was working like pretty well. So then we spent eight hours a week on a team and we were able to do all security testing fully during the sprints in this one day. So if you compare this to the, the security test we did, which took about five days and the sprint is about two weeks. So we were getting a bit more efficient in time costs as well. And of course the whole awareness of the team really increased and they, some of these guys became almost security experts running up to my desk, David, we have log forgery. We should like kill this application right away. So please take it easy. It's, it's not that bad, but they really start loving security and working on it and started reading books and ask all kinds of questions. So this is really a really fun thing to see. So this <coughs> awareness like increased pretty fast and the amount of things we found decreased uh, pretty fast. So yeah, we were really, really on the right, uh, on the right track here. So to give you some um, ideas for how this looks like, so probably anybody of you using Jira, we were using that as well. Um, so the next step we took is being visible on this board. So if we started to tag user stories, we just assigned a security code review activity to this story. We didn't assign the end test and some activity to it yet. Only if we saw from a code perspective that we needed additional verification on it using hands-on testing or tooling or whatsoever. So we were really trying to test as to get as much of assurance from code reviews because this is really efficient. And if you need to set up all your tooling, wait for environments which are not stable and you have to agree on time slices, it's then time is, is speeding up really fast. So we only did this if we really needed it. And if we added such a hands-on test case, we also put in there what our requirements were, so what we needed, which test, test data, when we need it. And so this, this, this worked pretty great. Um, in these stories, because if you, during a grooming, you see that a story doesn't need security testing, which is quite a decision, right? So 
we just skip security testing for this user story because from a story perspective, I think it's not possible. Um, I think it's not needed, sorry. Um, so we had to get our assurance. So if we decided this, we put into the comments why we did it and wh or why we not did it. So, um, and if there was any doubt, we took like a worst case approach. Um, because I think it's easier to just check some code than keep discussing on if this might probably might cause some kind of risk somewhere when if the moon and stars align and so we, shall we do security testing for it or not? Just tag it as a security story. Ask them to give you a heads up when the code is checked in. Run through it. Takes you about 10, 20 or maybe half an hour. 10, 20 minutes or half an hour and you know for sure if it's needed or not. If after a half an hour of reviewing, you didn't still didn't know if it's like security relevant because it was like a bunch of code which you can never like review in half an hour, we just added a security story to it that it needed reviewing later on. And otherwise we could just close it at, yeah, we checked it or yeah, we see it's, 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 it's not required. So just be practical with this. So the team was seeing us on the board now as well. So they knew where we were, uh, where we were working on. And um, this also helped us to get in touch with, with the team members from remote. So if they checked in stories, we got some kind of workflow going on there. They sent me an update like, okay, I've checked this in. I see there is this security tag. Um, it's linked to these stories, these revision numbers. Here you have the links, everything you need to do your security testing review. Which works really great and, uh, and efficient. Um, the next thing we did was, because what we didn't, put our feedback onto this board. Um, so if you find something, if we need an improvement, we walked up to the developers, had a chat, and they fixed it. But sometimes changes need like more time, right? And they committed to the sprint, so they are, aren't able to help you uh, at any time. Um, so all the security findings we did, we just added them to the board, just as defects or security bugs. And for all the things that we think need like structural improvement, using a different XML parser, uh, using a different templating engine, having choke points for input validation, using SAPI modules or, or whatsoever. These are like security depth kind of things. We just added them to the storyboard. Um, and from a security team's perspective, this is really nice to have because it forces your business owner or your project owner to choose between adding functionality or adding new security features. And this always had been a big battle, right? So business owner, you should do your security features because this is, you need, you need better security in this application. But if it's not really a big like vulnerability, it's really hard to get, uh, get things done. So, but now, it was like visible, they had to choose. And they were stressing out a bit if we kept saying that it was important and they kept ignoring it because the organization was able to see this as well. And if somehow you get hacked by one of these uh, advisors because it's not there, you might have, have a bit of a problem. So it was still very hard to get this done because in the, um, in real, it were like these orange things were ending up in the low priority. So it, it's, it's still something to work on and I still don't have a solution for this to convince um, how you choose between functionality and generic security improvements, right? So maybe some of you have experience with this, how to get this done, but we are still looking uh, how to how to fix this. Um, but for all the security defect bugs, they were like fixed quite quite fast, and this worked this worked pretty well. Um, 
So just to give a, a random example of give you an idea how you can take a practical approach in this. Um, if you're working together on an application, this kind of comments about potential risks probably it doesn't say anything to you. But if you're working on this app, you know exactly what kind of things you discussed on during the grooming. And this is just a reminder for developers when they start working on this to uh, get things uh, right in the first place. We also had uh, our security finding reports in there. We added user stories um, on security. So we were really integrating into this board. So security was getting really visible in the agile process. And basically what we were doing here is providing to the point actionable and relevant security criteria or requirements to the team. And maybe this is a bad example, but this type of to the point requirements are the requirements developers love. Don't hand them over a big corporate ESO policy with 150 security measures in there, not applying to the technology stack you are working on, saying that you need to do SSL and two-factor authentication if your application has CIA rating, blah, blah, blah. You will push this in your lower drawer right away if you even happen to know about its existence from a developer's perspective, right? These are actionable things. Um, so we were doing the security requirements thing here. <coughs> of course, we had to keep our security officers happy. Um, they still didn't look on this board. Uh, so we had to extract some kind of information for them. Um, keep this simple as well. What we did, we just had the simple uh, Excel sheets with the story numbers listed on it. Um, if it needed security testing or not, if there were any findings, if there were any open findings, and just this just simple one sheet Excel uh, could do or did the accountability thing for us. One of the other things, share, share knowledge. We organized knowledge sharing sessions. If we were doing this reviewing and we noticed that uh, some kind of security things weren't really understood by the development team. We just got together, keep it practical, get together in a room for an hour, show them things, show them code, demo, demo things, just to learn them about security and what you're doing. So, if we look back to this, um, it starts to look like this perfect security dream, right? What we are doing here. We have the threat modeling at the beginning. We have the security requirements here. We have peer and code reviews here. We have still, if it's needed, some security testing there. So we were on the right track here. Um, so if you think about this, um, Agile is often seen as a threat for software security. And um, I think it's, it's a blessing because for over the last 10 years, we weren't able as an industry to get this perfect security we talked about at the beginning right. And maybe Agile is forcing us as security people to finally change our methods to integrate into Agile and maybe even getting close to this perfect security thing. Something to think about. Um, takeaways to wrap this up. Um, to make this work, security guys should get out of their basement or ivory tower, wherever they are, and should start working together with software developers. A lot of security testing, testers I met during my 10-year career now in software security, they know this pen testing really well, and this really they rather spend like half a day fussing a form with burp or zap or whatsoever where they also could just have a five minute look at the code. But 
this tooling thing is their comfort zone, right? They know Perf, they know request, they know their tooling, how to launch it. So this is why we all stay uh, stuck in this, in, this, in this pen testing. Use the code more to be more efficient. And don't be scared, because I know there are a lot of them are really out of their comfort zone, sitting next to a developer, running through the code, and discussing with them on how to improve things. Because they don't know code very well. So they keep this whole pen testing thing existing, in my belief. So security, leave your comfort zone, get out there, work together with software developers. As I said, like <coughs> code reviewing is key here. So we weren't able to do this without code reviewing. 80 or 90% of the work is done by early code reviewing into the process. You never can get in this with any kind of automation uh, uh, at the end. You really need code reviews to be able to do agile sprinting. Um, be efficient, be risk-based. If it doesn't need testing, don't spend a minute on testing it. Get your requirements ready, do your threat modeling, and so you are so you able to just focus on the things that really need your attention because you have 50 teams to cover, right? You need to be efficient. Um, so this is where we are about uh, today. Um, there are still a lot of things in my mind to improve and I think this might be even the time to bring in some automation. And then I'm talking about like, if you know the code, you start knowing the weak spots there and then a simple shell script looking for specific code patterns in there can be way more valuable than a ton of static code analysis tooling in your organization. If you know what you're doing, if you know what you're looking for, you can start doing automation really, really efficiently. So we were able, we were, we, we were running SCA throughout the whole process and we were able to just have more are more valuable with simple simple scripts we run than this like million dollar projects we were using because they were just biting dust. Think about it. Okay, thanks. Um, I think I'm quite on time, so there might be there's some room for for questions. Um, I'm happy to answer them. Did you ever consider that uh, maybe a security guy could just join the development team? Maybe part-time, if... Well, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, basically what we do. <laughs> and basically what we do, we, we join this development team for a day, and it's quite common to have functional testers and maybe even performance testers on board right in your, in your development team, but it seems to be... happen little, very, very little that security guys are also part of this team, so this is what we need, security guys being part of development teams. Hi there. Um, in our organization, we tried a similar kind of approach, but found we were very, um, we were spread too thin. Um, to kind of achieve this, what kind of ratio of security team to developers did you find was kind of the, the magic number? <laughs> and is there, or how long is a piece of string like it? Yeah, yeah, I think you can, you can um, do, do the math on that. If you need like about, we needed four to eight hours per team and not uh, when when we were like supporting multiple teams together like five or six teams maybe seven sometimes teams are really low on what they what they produce and other teams are like really working hard so if you shift between teams and you take an efference on four six or eight hours depending on where they're working on you should be able to like cover Maybe just start easy, start with five teams, mm. and maybe just try to find your ways up to supporting more, more teams yeah. in there. So, okay. um, yeah, 50 teams, five guys, so one on 10, I think. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> so um, my question's about capability on, on code review. If, um, 
if a way forward is to move away from pen tests to, to code review, and I'm sure you know one solution is to hire in Securify um, or other firms who are similar. But have you got any thoughts on building um, security code review capability within an existing development organizations, how that might be done? Very good question. Um, so what we also did at a certain point in time is to hand over as much of our activities to the team itself. So the idea behind this is not to st get stuck into a team for years. So the whole idea in this is that you just work together for half a year or maybe a year and teach them to do the trick by themselves and maybe you're just then available for one hour a week but it's really key to hand over as much, of, uh, as much uh, of activities as possible so you can do things in unit testing so there's always one security savvy guy in the team who can do code reviewing for you and maybe get back to you if it's getting really, really hard. So the idea is to hand over, create security satellites in the teams and so you are also able to support more teams uh, at once if you have the security guys in there as well. So <coughs> organizations should invest in having their own security, software security guys in the teams. Give them trainings, ask if they like it, uh, give them time to spend on security. So they can be like your satellite in a team. Uh, hello. So I just wanted to know, I think you mentioned that uh, you started, you know, code reviews, probably one of the first activities from the security point of view. Have you tried already doing something a bit early, like uh, during the design phase, threat modeling or design reviews, probably that would help you to build better product back backlog for security. Um, yeah, another good question. Um, so in our situation, we had a ready and a done team. So we had one team filling, the team of architects filling up the backlog, and we had a team working them out. So at some point we also started, because these are only the highlights, but we worked a year on this. So there's much more in this, uh, which I didn't cover. But we also worked with these uh, teams which were filling the backlog. So then you are really doing, sit together with an architect doing the design stuff. So um, yes, that, that's what we did as well. Yeah, so you can do your threat modeling in the grooming, but you can even be earlier than that when we, at some point we also just run through the backlog ourselves just to work ahead on, on, on anything. And if we saw some kind of things that we think that might introduce issues, we got to, so the, the team wasn't working on the juicy story, uh, but we got together with architects to, to have it right already before the team even start discussing it in their grooming. Yeah. So another good idea would be to creating a, uh, another good idea would be creating a security baseline document in the design phase. Yeah, yeah, that's just if you can keep it practical. Then yeah, that's just really a great thing. Yeah. Uh, it is different for every application, so yeah, it's it's difficult to maintain, but uh, yeah, that can be an approach. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, question? No, one last question. Please. Thanks for the talk, uh, David. Um, it was great. Uh, in quality assurance, when we work agile, we plan bigger efforts to the end of the before going live for regression testing so that each change will be regression tested we build on regression testing how is your view in security testing will you build on regression testing towards the end and will you plan for bigger efforts i didn't see it in the, in the planning you made yeah yeah for sure uh, so uh, we were doing this for for one team um, and if we saw some kind of things getting wrong like such scripting or another, or another thing we uh, wanted to have this to benefit to have a benefit for the other teams as well so we try to when we are working on this now to automate any finding we do to find ways to have automated regression testing scripts for it to just run on our entire code base to, to yeah be able to catch things even if the same mistake is made in another team so and Again, it's, it's all about efficiency, so 
You don't want to do the same check over and over and over again, right? Automate if it's, if, if it's possible. Yeah. Okay, thank you, David. Very nice talk.